I'll set the scene for you in Central Park. There's a woman walking her dog. There is a man who is bird watching, but he's really people watching because he starts getting involved in this woman's business. I will refer to her as Ms. Karen. I will refer to him as Mr. Karen. So Ms. Karen is walking her dog and she's got the dog without a leash. So Mr. Karen decides to get very nosy and tell Ms. Karen to put a leash on her dog. Ms. Karen then says she doesn't want to put the leash on her dog. So Mr. Karen, like a creep, says, okay, well then I'm going to do something that you're not going to like very much, reaches into his bag, pulls out doggy treats, doggy treats that this guy only had so that he could lure other people's dogs away because he was so irritated when the dogs didn't have leashes. So Mr. Karen pulls out doggy treats to lure Ms. Karen's dog away. Ms. And I think the, the exact words that Mr. Karen said, according to him, were, I'm going to do what I'm going to do and you're not going to like it which is, that's a pretty weird thing to say when you're isolated with somebody in a park, especially if you're a man and she's a woman. Then Ms. Karen loses her mind. I have caught you up. We have set the scene. Now take a listen to what ensues. Would you please stop? Sir, I'm asking you to stop. Please don't come close to me. Sir, I'm asking you to stop recording me. Please don't come close to me. Please take your phone off. Please don't come close to me. And I'm taking a picture of calling the cops. Please, please call the cops. Please call the cops. I'm going to tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. Please tell them whatever you like. Excuse me? I'm sorry, I'm in the ramble, and there is a man, African-American, he has a bicycle helmet. He is recording me and threatening me and my dog. There is an African-American man, I am in Central Park, he is recording me and threatening myself and my dog. And my... I'm sorry, I can't hear you either. I'm being threatened by a man in the ramble. Please send the cops immediately. I'm in Central Park in the ramble. I don't know. Thank you. Okay, so obviously this woman behaving absolutely hysterically. But the guy was behaving hysterically too. They are both Karen. This is Mr. and Ms. Karen. I think they should get married. They should live unhappily ever after. Everyone is focusing on how wrong this woman was. And they're calling her all sorts of things. She's a racist. She's terrible. She's got to have her life ruined. And no one's focusing on what a weirdo, creepy dude this guy is. This guy, Mr. Karen, is much more in the wrong than this lady, Ms. Karen, much more in the wrong. Men should not behave like that. Men should not go up to women in the middle of parks and start chatting with them if they don't want to be chatted with and, you know, stick around there if they don't want to be stuck around with and then start feeding treats to their dogs that you're trying to lure away, treats that you only have to lure people's dogs away and then start filming them. That's weird behavior. People shouldn't do that. Also, men should not humiliate women. They should not humiliate women privately. They should not humiliate women publicly by filming them and putting that video all over the internet and then subsequently or consequently rather ruining her life. That's not very chivalrous behavior. That is the behavior of a society that has lost the sense of manliness and gentlemanliness. And then let's not forget, most of all, he started it. This guy started it because he had to start carrying around her business and making a big fuss because she didn't have her dog on a leash in the park. Okay. Now what people are trying to do, what race hustling, mostly white liberal social justice warriors are trying to do is make this a whole racial issue. I guarantee you if the case was flipped, they, and, and this woman was walking around and this this guy didn't have his dog on a leash. They would be making a big deal about that. They would be saying, oh, it's not a big deal to have your dog on a leash. They would, this is obviously a very opportunistic case for people to push a leftist narrative. It's the same narrative that we see constantly, you know, all, all over the political left. The New York Times is pushing this precise narrative. Listen to this. They describe him. 
Mr. Cooper, 57, a Harvard graduate who works in communications. Is hearing that he's a Harvard graduate supposed to make me think he's a more respectable fellow? That is not the way to convince somebody that, that this guy is respectable. Har mm, I don't think so. He's long been a prominent birder in the city and is on the board of the New York City Audubon Society. A prominent birder? What is a prominent birder? Oh yes, Mr. Cooper, that well-known birder that, oh yes, I see him birding about. Oh, what is birding? I guess he, he looks at birds. That's what that means. He's a bird watcher. That, there are no prominent bird watchers. <laughs> okay, he's a guy. Here, here's what they're saying. Mr. Cooper, who 35 years ago went to a college in Boston, uh, looks at birds and enjoys looking at birds. Okay, fine. He, maybe he's a an otherwise nice guy. He doesn't seem like a nice guy from this video, but sure. Then the New York Times admits what he did. This is directly from the New York Times, quoting Mr. Cooper. Look, if you're going to do what you want, I'm going to do what I want, but you're not going to like it, he told her, before he pulled out the treats and began filming, according to his post. Mr. Cooper then produced dog treats and said, he said, I pull out the dog treats I carry for just such intransigence, he wrote. He's admitting he carries the treats to get weird with other people's dogs. That's when I started video recording with my iPhone and when her inner Karen fully emerged and took a dark turn, he said, using the name that has become slang for an entitled white woman. So first of all, the people who are trying to make this a racial thing should at least admit off the top, this guy is using a racist term. The New York Times is calling it a racist term. Now it would appear that the word Karen has transcended race and sex, <laughs> mostly because of this guy. But from the very beginning, if they're saying that this woman is a racist, surely this guy is a racist too. He's using the term that the Times admits is racist. What's the end result? She loses her job and she loses her dog. I, I'm not joking. She got fired from her investment management firm and they took her dog away. For what? Because she had this hysterical meltdown in the park because some hysterical guy goaded her into it. And now she's being smeared as a racist. Is this woman a racist? I don't know. Maybe she is. But from the video, I can't conclude that she's a racist. Why? They're saying that the two pieces of evidence that this woman is a racist are that she behaved hysterically on the phone with the cops and that she noted several times that he is an African-American man. Well, she was behaving hysterically before she ever called the cops. From the very beginning of the video, she says, I, I, I'm going to get away from me, please stop it. And she's, be, I mean, she's behaving in a ridiculous way, but it's not as though her behavior changed in any significant way when she called the cops. She was already behaving hysterically. So that was not performative. And the, the implication here is that she was performing this hysteria for the cops because she wanted to get the cops there to kill the man. Because, you know, there's an epidemic in America of racist cops killing innocent black men, which is not true. There are incidents that are sensationalized that try to craft this narrative that there is a, an epidemic of racist cops slaughtering innocent black men, but that isn't the case. The reason that the stories become so sensational when they happen is precisely because they are so rare. It is very easy to be emotionally manipulated, particularly by the mainstream media on issues like this, but the statistics do not bear it out. So there's that first part, gone. What about the second one? She kept noting that he's an African-American man. Again, maybe she's a racist. Maybe she's not a racist. Maybe the definition of racism keeps changing because the left exploits it so much. I mean, now we're told that, that only certain races can be racist, but other races can't be racist. I'm not joking. That's what the left tells you. So again, I don't even know what definition we're working with anymore, but let's just look at that piece of evidence. She keeps saying on the phone, he's an African-American man. She also notes that he's wearing a bike helmet right? When you call, if you are going to call and make a police report, which was a ridiculous thing for this woman to do in this case, but both of these people were behaving in a ridiculous manner. So she calls and makes a police report. When you make a police report, you describe the person that you're making the police report on, right? You don't say, well, he's, uh, yeah, he's, uh, wearing a blue shirt. Okay. Can you tell us anything else about him? No, I'm not allowed to say anything else about him because if I do, I'll be smeared as a racist and lose my job. So she mentions his race. She also mentions that he's wearing a bicycle helmet. Is she a cyclophobe? Does she have a deep seated hatred of bicycles or something like that? I don't know. Why did she include that detail? 
that would seem to be evidence to me that she's including descriptors so that hopefully the police can come and arrest this man for the high crime of being a weirdo with dog treats. Conservatives need to stop playing into this nonsense. They have to. Both of these people behaved badly. Both of them behaved in a shameful way, an embarrassing way. Now, only Mr. Karen filmed Ms. Karen and ruined her life, but they both behaved in a, in a silly way. The woman apparently, according to reports, is a, is a liberal. So I don't exactly have a political dog in this fight, but I'm just so offended by this guy's behavior. It's so unchivalrous. It's so unmanly. It's just so, it's just ugly behavior. Okay. And I think some conservatives want to prove that they're not racists to the left, which by the way, is not possible because the left doesn't care whether you're a racist or not. They just want to smear you. You know, who's going to know if, if you're a racist or not you, that's it. Do you hate people of other races? And do you, do you judge them unfairly based on their race? No. Okay, good. You're not a racist. Good. Don't worry. Doesn't matter what the left says about you. If you know it, it's good enough. Okay. Defending this creep does not make you Rosa Parks. All right. Ruining this woman's life does not make you Martin Luther King. Does anyone really believe that this woman should have her life ruined over this thing? Because she was walking her dog and some creep tried to lure the dog away and then filmed her and humiliated her nationally? No, nobody thinks that. I don't think the guy, this weirdo bird watcher should have his life ruined either. I don't think either of these people should have their lives ruined. I think they should both take a good long think sit down, have a good long stew session on how their lives came to this point and maybe what's, what's wrong with the way they see the world. But I don't think either of them should have their lives ruined for this. A society that gets pleasure out of ruining people's lives like this for ideological fantasies is sick and ugly. I tweeted out, I said, Hey, Twitter mob, do y'all feel good now that you ruined this woman's life? And a lot of people responded, mostly white liberals. It's always the white liberals. That's like that, that, that tends to be the first wave of meanness and nastiness when it comes to this kind of ideology. But you know, other people too. Some people responded and said, yeah, I feel great. I feel awesome. I feel so happy that this woman's life is ruined. That is a sick and ugly society. And we should not want any part of that sort of thing. They're not the only Karens in New York though. Mr. and Ms. Karen, who will go and live unhappily ever after, are not the only ones. There was a big Karen session in Staten Island. We're moving from Central Park. We're moving all the way down Manhattan Island. We are now crossing over the water, getting into Staten Island, the for- forgotten borough in New York, in a grocery store. Another, w- another example of men behaving abominably to women. It's funny, everyone thinks that the, the, this story is about race, these kind of Karen stories. It's not about race. Frankly, it's much more about sex than it is about race because some woman doesn't wear a mask. And the Staten Islanders in this supermarket lose their minds, start screaming obscenities to kick this person out of the supermarket. That's normal behavior. That's a normal society, right? Somebody walks in to a supermarket, does not have a mask on. You know that thing that we all did up until three months ago? Doesn't have a mask on. You know the thing that we were told not to wear because they don't do anything? Actually, because it would hurt the healthcare workers, they said, if we wore masks. Someone does that. And uh, it would be as though this guy walked in totally naked screaming obscenities, firing off pistols. That's the kind of reaction that he got because it was, I actually couldn't tell from the video if it was a he or a she, regardless, whoever the person is. I think it was a she, it looked like a woman, but you know, who can tell with these kind of things? Regardless, this is the kind of reaction that that person gets. Something has gone a little bit off in society. People are a little bit too on edge and it's not just the pandemic. And I don't think, I don't think that this epidemic really helps. 
people in, in how on edge they are. But I think we were already on edge. I think that the phenomenon of the Twitter mob, the phenomenon of the gotcha video, the phenomenon of I'm going to ruin this person's life because they said something that I don't like, that is indicative of a deeper edginess in the culture. We're just really angry at each other. We just really, we just want, we just want to get some revenge for something, for I don't know what because we got a chip on our shoulder because people are very miserable. I'm sure that these two things are connected. There have been a lot of social scientific surveys in recent years that show that people are really miserable. They're lonely. They're angry. Their lives haven't panned out the way that they think that they should. And I think a big cause of that is because of the disconnect because it, between ideology and reality. The ideological vision that we've all been sold that nothing really matters, there's no God, there's no love, there's no joy, there's no nobility, there's no point in serving our country or each other. It's all just a farce. We're all going to turn to worm food in the end. Uh, we need to just pursue our pleasure ruthlessly and live for ourselves. That's the thing we've been told on the left and the right. And the reality that all of those things will make us miserable. I think that's, that's the disconnect. That's got us all a little bit on edge. Well, guess what? I don't think that you will feel any better by taking that sort of anger out on other people. The only way you will feel any better is if you look in at yourself, take a gander in the mirror, and fix your own life. Hey, Michael Knowles here. And the fact is, a life of cigars and scotch does not come cheap. So please be sure to subscribe to The Daily Wire on YouTube because I depend heavily on your support to continue this wonderful lib-triggering life. Thanks.